All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from KHUX Nation and in today's video, we're going to be simply it's honestly going to be a very sh short video. <laughs> um, but this is just a video just discussing and going over real quick on how to beat Nightmare Charity since a lot of people seem to be struggling to beat Nightmare Charity. Uh, I only discovered this because of the uh, the Square Enix live stream that was happening and a lot of people apparently claiming that they don't know how to beat it or it's really difficult. I even had a couple comments in some of my videos saying how how the heck did I do it just for them to realize that I showed my setup <laughs> in in the uh, in the cutscene video. Um, but regardless, either way, I wanted to at least talk about it real quick, maybe give you guys some insight to possibly help you out if you're having trouble with it. Uh, the rewards aren't exactly, you know, the most spectacular thing in the world. Or the the power gem's decent, um, but I'm pretty sure many of you who can't beat it just want to beat it just because you know it's part of the main storyline and whatnot. You know, part part of that pride factor. Uh, but anyways, regard uh, other than that, let's quickly go over it. So the main things that you need to kind of be aware of when fighting Nightmare Charity are. Basically only three things and are honestly, well, okay, I'll just go over them. Three of them being that A, you can't use reverse metals because of the fact that he gets healed when he gets hit by reverse attacks. B, you can't use power metals because of the fact that he reflects 10% of the damage, um, which will instantly kill you. And C, the fact that he has counters and when he reaches zero he counterattacks. okay um he does lower your strength so you have to be careful of that but if you're using the right types of metals and or strategy it's that's like irrelevant and you could probably get around the counters as well it's really just finding a setup that doesn't use reverse or power that's kind of the main issue because <laughs> as we all know our favorite <laughs> Our favorite buffer metal in the game is Kinemits 3 Kyrie A. Um, or if you you typically use a reverse setup, it would be Shion A. So obviously they're power, so if you tried using them, you would die immediately. Now there is a couple tricks that you could possibly use uh, if you don't want to use my type of strategy uh, for the setup, which isn't really much of a strategy. It's it's fairly simple. <laughs> but I'll go through the different types of uh kind of workarounds you could attempt to try uh, in case you, you prefer one over the other. So let's go ahead and get right into that. Uh, the first of them being that A, instead of using Kyrie, Kyrie A, okay, Kyrie Shion, uh, what you would then do instead is, remember those original Kingdom Hearts 3 medals that first came out when the Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts 3 deals were new and stuff, like right after Kingdom Hearts 3 came out? You want to use those essentially <laughs> all those like tier 9 metals such as like Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora and such uh, what was it? I think there was a Riku metal as well that does the exact same thing uh, you want to use these types of metal actually no you want you don't want to use Riku he's power yeah Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora is probably one one of the few um, but metals like Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora because of the fact that Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora still provides max 15 tiers of general strength and uh, 15 tiers of general defense debuffs and that's the main requirement that you kind of need uh, for a buffer metal at the very least because the other stuff most metals that have been coming out these days can more or less fulfill the requirements for the other buffs and debuffs so like you know upright buffs and debuffs PSM buffs and debuffs all that good shenanigans most metals these days can already fulfill those but there's not very many metals in the game they can help completely max out general strength uh, buffs and general defense debuffs. So you want a metal like Kingdom Hearts 3 Sword. This is just what I happen to be using. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm using Sleeping Lion. This is my main Keyblade at the moment. Honestly, Sleeping Lion's probably the most busted Keyblade in the game at the moment, just because it has access to the most amount of uh, the more meta strength buffer metals at the moment so as you can see here i currently have ultimate form of sora i have 
here at number 21. I don't have Gula, but I do have Ventus, okay? And I recently got extra attack on him, so extra icing cake. Uh, I have Ava in my spirit slot. So, and then I just have a Lee hopping here at number 21. So this is more or less very similar to what my normal setup would be on sleeping on it's just slightly tweaked in order to fit the requirements for nightmare charity okay now in case you don't want to use a buffer metal such as like kingdom Hearts 3 sora there is a way for you to work around not having a secondary good buffer metal they might have so maybe like you're a newer player or something and you don't have like as vast a collection of metals like I do, for example. Uh, there is one small trick that you could do uh, to kind of bypass that, which is where as long as the first slot of your Keyblade is not a power slot, you can still use Kyrie A, uh, or even Shion A for that matter. You can use Kyrie or Shion A, preferably Kyrie A because you can't really use reverse metals uh, in the set in your setup anyways uh, But you can still use them in the first slot as long as the first slot is not power base Specifically because of the fact that here, I'll, I'll quickly show you guys real quick uh, If you do use a power slot, so my stroke of midnight you see how this first slots power Because of the fact that Kyrie and Shion are power based metals. They will gain the extra bonus multiplier that is given from the first slot so when you go for your first cast on a metal on a keyblade like Shrek of Midnight where the first slot is power based, your first cast of uh, Kyrie or Shion is going to do a ton of damage to them, which will be reflected back at you and instantly kill you. So the goal here is to essentially have uh, the first cast of Kyrie or Shion only deal one damage. So that way, only one damage gets reflected back at you. That's the goal. So in order to do that, you have to your first slot has to be uh, a non-power based slot. So like Sleeping Lion, for example, the first slot is just speed upright. So if I wanted to, I could actually change my Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora over there and I can still put my Kyrie there instead. Now, quick disclaimer, there is a risk to this, or there is a risk to this, which is this only works if your Kairu Shion does not have extra attack. Why, you might ask? Specifically because of the fact that as soon as you cast your Kairu Shion for the first time, you're going to have a majority of your buffs and debuffs needed for any other type of metal to start doing a uh, decent amount of damage. So what happens is, if your Kairu Shion happens to have extra attack, Regardless of whether you tap to attack or you actually cast for a second time, the metal is going to do way too much damage because it's receiving all the buffs and debuffs that received from the first cast of Kyrie Shion. So it only works if you do not have extra attack on your Kyrie Shion. Okay, so that's that's a small little kind of trick if you want to go ahead and try that out, uh, if that applies to you. But for the most part, I, I just ended up using a metal that provided max uh, general strength and max general defense debuffs. Uh, which, in this case, was Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora. Uh, I, my Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora also has second chance on it just because of the fact that he's kind of one of those uh, odd buffer metals that I occasionally have to use for events like this. Um, the only thing you gotta keep in mind, so if you do decide to use a metal like Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora that provides max strength uh, and general defense, buffs and debuffs you have to make sure that you follow it up with a metal afterwards that still provides uh the rest of your buffs and debuffs your p uh your psm and upright and yeah psm and upright buffs and debuffs as well so in this case i'm using ultimate form sora my ultimate form sora has extra attack even if it didn't have all of the other traits as long as i had the extra attack that's all i really needed is the fact that he provides everything i just listed for me okay he's basically the other half of a Kyrie or Shion that you're missing. Okay. So I was using him. Uh, and then for the rest of it, you just kind of use whatever you need to. Again, avoid reverse metals and power metals 
uh, as much as possible. Right now, the monocolored Keyblades are the most busted. So I highly recommend you use either Sleeping Lion or Counterpoint if possible, just because the fact that they're going to be the most busted uh, for these next few days up until the end of this month, September. Okay, what we got? We got about like eight, nine days left before the boosters expire. Uh, because of the fact that they just recently added the 1.6 multiplier to monocolored keyblades and we still have the boosters for this month for monocolored keyblades as well uh monocolored keyblades are by far the most busted keyblades in the format right now uh like you can see the multipliers on my keyblades like my fifth slot on my sleep line has like a 10 times multiplier that's insane <laughs> whereas if i go to uh like fairy stars it's only at like a almost a seven times multiplier that's a big difference so definitely take advantage of the monocolor keyblades as much as possible. Now in terms of uh, my setup, you might have to adjust it according to what you currently have. But if you're looking to try something that's more meta, uh, I highly recommend you try to use as many metals as possible that increase uh, your metal's strength value in some way, shape or form. So like key art, num uh, yeah, key art number 21, for example, provides a general strength buff to all metals afterwards by 1500 uh i have lee copying ultimate form sword does the same thing but for upright metals ventus does it for speed metals and then ava does it for all metal okay so you just want as many of these as possible on a single keyblade as you can uh if you don't have enough that's fine i think you can still do it without it it just might be a little bit more difficult so in case you're wondering what my traits are for all my metals, uh, I'll go ahead. There's the full list. If you just want to quick it. I pretty much almost every single metal on my setup has extra attack except Kingdom Hearts 3 Stora. Um, only a handful of them, only like half of them have uh, strength and like minus 60. I don't think you need the minus 60 though, to be honest, in order to beat it. As long as the metals themselves have the strength buffs, you should be fine. Um, the way that my setup is right now, I can beat Nightmare Charity in about a turn and a half. So I'm willing to bet that without the extra special, you know, spice that my metals have, like the, the traits and such, you, you could you could probably beat it within three turns, like on the third turn or something. I'm like, that, that's my bet. Hmm. All right. So without further ado, let me go ahead and actually play the quest for you guys so you can go ahead and check it out uh for my friend metal i am using one of my friends gula that they currently have just because i think that well it does fit sleeping lion it just helps make my my setup more busted um although if you don't have a gula don't worry that's that's fine you can still use any other friend metal that's like a hopefully a tier 10 metal and you should be fairly fine just remember to make sure it's not a power or a burst type All right, so starting off, the main things that we need to keep track of are just simply the fact that he gets healed when using reverse metals, as well as the fact that he reflects power-based attack. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that for my setup just because of the fact that I'm using none of that. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I'm using none of that. That's the This is the button I meant to press. I'm using almost entirely just speed metals, uh, aside from Ava, who is magic. Um, but I don't have to worry about it at all whatsoever. Now, because of the fact that you're probably not going to be using a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, uh, like I mentioned before, you do want to make sure you get all of your general strength buffs and general defense debuffs as much as possible. Now, it is worth noting that the enemy does start off with about 10 tiers of defense uh, buffs. So even in this case, just using Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora once isn't going to be enough to fully debuff him. Okay. Uh... So you want to keep an, an eye out for that. I don't have to worry about too much for my setup just because of the fact that my key art number 21, which gets used four times <laughs> with all the EA, uh, on one cast already debuffs the enemy by 10 tiers, their general defense by 10 tiers, which will, in this case, completely max out the debuffs for him because he's already at minus five. He just needs 10 more. So I don't have to worry about that too much. 
So what I'm going to currently do right here is I'm just going to use ultimate form of Sora just to provide the rest of the uh, PSM and upright buffs and debuffs that I need that King of Hearts 3 Sora was not able to provide. Uh, so now I'm pretty much all maxed out except for the general defense debuffs and I'm going to go ahead and quickly use Ghoul over here to provide some quick strength buffs as well as uh, the guilt boost as well for, the, for my entire setup for this turn. But we got plus, I think it's like plus 3,000. Is it plus 3,000? Or what? It was some, it was some good, good number. I think it's 3,000. 3,000 speed strength for all my medals. Go ahead and use Lee. Now the opponent's fully debuffed, and now I can just leave my, uh, my setup on auto. The only thing I have to keep track of at this point are the actual blue counters above his head. I want to make sure that doesn't reach zero, otherwise he'll counterattack. Uh, and a good portion of the tier 10 medals at this point in the game do reset counters. Um, and I think there's probably a few other medals in the game right now, viable medals in the game right now. They also still reset counters, so it's not as big of a deal. Uh, make sure you have enough gauges when you do go into this, though. You don't you don't want to run out of gauges. All right, you. Okay. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and use Ava. Actually, no, I'll use Kira number 21 to reset the counters. Okay. There we go. I still have Ava's uh, Supernova as well, who also resets counters. So I don't have to worry about counters for a while. And I honestly, I should be able to beat him uh, fairly easily. There we go. That's how you beat Nightmare Charity. Or at least that's how I beat Nightmare the Charity. <laughs> All right. Again, keep in mind that if you don't have enough damage medals, or or should I say, let me clarify, you don't have as good damage medals that I do, don't worry. I'm pretty sure you could still do it. Okay, as long as they're about, as long as you're using like tier nine, tier 10 medals, uh, you should be able to pass it, no problem. If you're not, if you're using like tier eight medals for the most part, you might struggle. Just because of the fact that, oh, just because of the fact that uh, many of the tier 8 medals at this at, at the moment in this game uh, don't have nearly as high of a strength value compared to tier 9 and tier 10 medals right now. Uh, most tier 8 medals have roughly around like a 20,000 strength value, whereas tier 10 medals right now, for example, have a 30,000 strength value. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a big difference. On top of the fact of all the medals that you would hopefully be using uh, that provides strength buffs on top of that uh it only makes it stronger so you would still need like about like eight metal casts or whatever in order to have enough buffs strength buffs to even have a tier eight metal have relatively the same strength value of a base strength value of a tier 10 metal if that makes sense so it's a huge difference but other than that, go ahead and leave any advice that you might have about your setups in the comment section down below uh, in case my video didn't happen to help out nearly as much. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KHX Nation. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.